Hey, this is Dr. Jared Moss. I wanted to do a video today on intracavernosal injection teaching. This is simply just penile injection teaching. Uh, penile injections are a common form of treatment for men with erectile dysfunction. Um, it's typically used with medications that are either compounded through a compounding pharmacy or with a prescription. Um, the difference between the medications, the compounding pharmacy generally need, <clears throat> generally tends to be cheaper. The prescription medicines that you've received from a traditional pharmacy um, typically are more expensive, but the benefit there is that they don't have to be refrigerated and they're easier to travel with. Uh, the biggest danger of a penile injection is an erection lasting longer than three hours. So it's always important that we ask that you bring your medicines to us for the first injection so that we can properly teach you how to inject, but we can also talk to you about the dangers of injecting. Today, in today's visit, you're gonna be receiving a test injection. So uh, usually for a lot of times for men, we don't expect that you're gonna have a very, very good erection at your first dose. This is basically just to teach you how to use the medication, make sure that you're comfortable, assess your response, and then we will talk to you about the dosing moving forward. Um, typically, we will go up in very small increments. A needle that typically that they provide you is an insulin needle and the units on the um, syringe go in essentially 10 so it goes from 10 20 30 40 all the way to 100 units and this is a 1 cc um, syringe and it's an insulin syringe this is the most common syringe that's provided for men when they're learning how to inject um, a medicine like trimix or edex what we call an intracavernosal uh, injection um, the medication uh, typically will come from a pharmacy. This is a medication that's compounded called Trimix. This is probably the most common form of the medication that I prescribe for men that are using intracavernosal injections um, because of the cost and its efficacy. Um, Trimix has three different medications that it uses and it works by increasing blood flow to the penis. Um, a lot of times the injections um, will burn a little bit um, and the medicine that typically causes the burning is called alprostadil. When you use Trimix or you're able to use other medicines, you can dilute the amount of alprostadil that's required, but still give you a good erection. So, i.e., the medicine burns less and is still effective. Um, so that's typically the way that I explain it. Um, when you go to draw up the medication, you will take the insulin syringe, you will remove the back and the top. Um, I don't have it with me here today, but normally if this is a medicine that has not been freshly opened, we would always clean the top off with an alcohol swab first on the back of the syringe. And then we also ask that the back of the penis be cleaned uh, with an alcohol swab. I will typically tell patients that you're going to draw more medication than you need initially. So I'll hold the vial up. I will push in to get rid of the air bubble. And then I will draw back more medication than I need. I will typically start patients off with a dose of 10. So I will push the medicine back in until I see the top black line resting at the number 10 and we'll go over with this with you today. The needle is then removed and this can be set aside. At this point, you could clean your penis with an alcohol swab. Again, I don't have an alcohol swab here today for teaching purposes, um, but the back of the penis would be cleaned. When we're talking about doing uh, penile injections, <clears throat> Really, they always tell patients, there's nothing that you can hurt from a danger standpoint. The urethra runs on the underside of the penis, so this is typically an area that you would not want to inject the underside of the penis. But the erection bodies, you have two erection bodies that are on the back of the penis. And so I will usually tell people that anywhere mid-shaft towards the base, and typically either at a two or 10 o'clock position, so either here or here, are fine places to inject. One of the most common mistakes that men make is that they don't inject the needle deep enough to get into the erection chamber. So they may say, well, it doesn't work very well, but they weren't able to get the needle all the way in. It's very important to make sure that the needle is hubbed all the way into the meat of the penis in order to be able to deposit the medicine where it's effective and it's gonna increase the blood flow. So after you've properly cleaned the penis off, the other thing that you wanna make sure is that you don't go at an angle like this or like this, but you wanna go in at a 90 degree angle and you wanna go in all the way. So if I inject the medicine today, I'll take the needle, I go all the way in, I'll inject the medicine, I'll pull the needle out, I'll apply pressure here for maybe 20 to 30 seconds, 
and then that's it. Um, this medicine does work whether you're sexually stimulated or not. That's not the case for medicines such as Viagra or Cialis. Um, those are medicines that typically you have to be sexually stimulated in order for them to be effective. This is not a medication that you have to be sexually stimulated in order for it to work, but obviously it works better when you are sexually stimulated. It typically takes around three to five minutes in order for a man to have an erection after this. Um, our goal is an erection lasting somewhere around 30 to 40 minutes. And so today, for instance, if you have maybe a 30% erection and we started at a dose of 10, then the next time that you inject, we would ask you to go to 15. If 15 doesn't work, we would ask that you go to 20. If 20 doesn't work, we would ask that you go to 25. You need at least 24 to 36 hours between injections, so that's very important to make sure that you've allowed enough time. Um, where men get in trouble is when men try to re-inject themselves, and I'll tell men, once you've injected, what you've got is what you've got for the next 24 hours. If you don't like it, then you cannot re-inject. That's where men run into the risk of priapism. If you have an erection that's lasting longer than three hours, then you need to notify uh, a physician, a physician office, or go to the emergency room. Um, the maximum dose that I typically tell people is 50. If you're requiring more than 50 on the syringe, then we certainly need to look at other options um, to discuss. So I hope this talk has been helpful today. Um, the different types of medicines, whether it be Trimix, which is compounded, or Edex, or Cabergec, which are your more traditional type of medicine that are easier to travel with. They don't have to be kept cold, but they are more expensive. The Trimix is cheaper, but it does have to be kept cold once it's mixed up. Um, the medicines do expire, so that's one thing. It's not a danger, but if you notice that the medicine is not working as well as it used to, then it would be time to go back and um, get more medicine, and that's specifically as it relates to the Trimix, because once the medicine is mixed up, it does have a shelf life, and then it does start to lose some of its uh, efficacy over time. Uh, we talked about the dangers of priapism, um, notifying a doctor if you have an erection lasting longer than three hours. Um, we talked about how to draw up the medicine, um, how to inject it, pushing it all the way into the meat of the penis, making sure you're at a 90 degree angle, um, and then working up very, very slowly on that dosage um, with the goal of an erection lasting around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, so I hope this information is helpful. We're gonna come in, we're gonna teach you how to do this today, and then of course we'll answer any questions um, that you have uh, regarding this. And uh, 